Hello and welcome to Pedra's Getting to Know You. I'm your host, Jen Dawson, and today I am joined by the lovely Holly Neal. She is Pedra's fellow. She joined us back in June of 2021. She supports many things in the organization, chief among them are Pedra's social media outreach, as well as board and executive committee and consensus guidelines support. And she also represents the medical student community on our early investigator committee. Welcome, Holly. Thanks for being here. Hi, Jen. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to chat with you. Yes, me too. So why don't you fill everybody in on what led you to pediatric dermatology? I know you're a fourth year medical student, so it's early on in your time to have such an interest in a specific area. So what drew you in? Yeah, definitely. Um, So for me, when I started medical school at UMass Med, I was kind of an open book, but I had certain ideas of what I wanted to do. Um, And one huge one was working with kids. So before medical school, I was uh, working in childcare for, I wouldn't want to say over 10 years. Um, I started pretty young. I was working as a babysitter. And then um, in my gap year, I did nannying. And so I've always just really loved this population. And it was to kind of maintain that. Um, So I was like, oh, maybe pediatrics. Um, And then, you know, my undergraduate degree was in neuroscience. So I was like, maybe neuro, like neurology or psychiatry. Um, But then as I started to sign up for interest groups and started to shadow, I um, came into dermatology as a first year student. Um, And the setting was just very unique. So my first exposure was actually at Grand Rounds um, at my medical school, which is very exciting. Um, They usually bring in like about five very interesting or hard to solve cases. And um, yeah, it's super fun. Everyone's on their feet running around. Like you go into the rooms with these big groups of attendings and trainees and physician assistants, and it's collaborative and everyone's asking questions, going to the next patient, like working together, trying to figure out what's going on. And then everyone comes together for dinner afterwards and discusses the cases. And I remember thinking it was just so exciting. Like I loved how everyone was working together. Everyone was running around and the patients were very diverse in age. Like we saw kids, we saw adults, we saw elderly patients and we saw conditions of um, like a big, good variety of conditions. So there were like rashes, moles, hair disorders. And I was just very kind of drawn into this and very curious as a first year. And I just couldn't let that go. So because I had that specific interest before in pediatrics, as I got more and more involved in dermatology, I had a mentor um, who connected me to pediatric dermatology and I really never looked back. I love that you, I mean, there's so many things there that I can pull out that are like a direct connection to Pedra. You know, you felt like the grand rounds were very collaborative and open and everybody was working together. Well, that's just like Pedra. And then to have a mentor that's inspired you, I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, Pedra first and foremost believes in cultivating our early career so that we can continue to have more people coming into the field. So that is so exciting. So talk to me about your journey to research, because I know your mentor was a big part of you being inspired to continue in research as well. Yeah. Um, When I decided that I was very interested in pediatric dermatology, I seeked um, a research fellowship in between my third and fourth years of medical school to do full research. And so I worked with Dr. Howerluck at Mass General Hospital and Boston Children's Hospital. Um, And I really was interested in kind of studies that directly impact patient care. Um, And I also was very interested in my mentor's area of interest, which is pediatric melanoma. I thought this was really fascinating because it is so rare, but it has a huge impact on quality of life and what these kids go through. Um, And for me with a huge um, interest in really helping kids and helping that quality of life aspect, that was super important to me. So pretty early on, we had this meeting before my fellowship even began, and we really just talked about my goals. Um, And my mentor was so amazing and just listening to these interests I had in advocacy and kind of quality of life and patient perspectives. So from there, we got actually started with an advocacy organization, the Gorland Syndrome Alliance, um, and did some work for kind of like the first half of my year um, on some survey research, getting patient perspectives on basal cell carcinoma in children. 
And then we shifted gears towards the second half of my fellowship to focus on congenital nevi and specifically children with congenital nevi that are considered high risk for having abnormalities in the brain. So kind of like the common theme of my year was helping kids with higher risk um, skin diseases or kind of cutaneous manifestations of systemic diseases. I also started to get very interested in and trying to see how this could directly impact our clinical care. Wow. I mean, that's quite a journey and how great that you were able to experience that journey alongside Dr. Harlech. That's pretty uh, exciting. She's a favorite in the network for mentoring. And I know a lot of people are inspired by her. Yeah, she's a very, very amazing mentor. I feel extremely lucky and grateful to have worked with her and have like this lifelong mentor and friend. And she's just, every patient is very, very lucky to have her. Yes, I know. So what do you, like, as you move through your education, um, do you think you'll, you'll continue to focus on, um, pediatric melanoma and nevi and basal cell carcinoma, or do you think you'll branch out into some of the other disease areas? I think I'm very an open book right now. So <laughs> I love kind of all dermatology. And so the other um, aspect of the research fellowship was clinical exposure. So mm-hmm. all of those bread and butter dermatoses, atopic dermatitis, mm-hmm. hemangiomas, mm-hmm. and pediatric dermatology, I really got a lot of exposure to. And I'm very interested in those patients as well. So I think there's tons of room for research in these areas of kind of the more common diseases as well. Um, and because I, I'm like the type of person who I get very inspired by most people and I can definitely see myself (laughs) during training, meeting just amazing mentors and wanting to be involved with lots of different types of research. So although I definitely want to stay um, very heavily involved with the Borland Syndrome Alliance and with my work in congenital nevi, I certainly can see myself branching out into other areas. I think it's easily done, especially within the PEDRA network, because everybody is so inspiring and everybody is so willing to mentor. So I know, Holly, that you also have an interest in mentoring and you do some peer mentoring. Tell us about that. Sure. Um, So I I have some interest uh, in teaching the community as well as teaching some peers. So my interest in teaching others started uh, prior to medical school with actually tutoring. And then in medical school, I started educating community members. So I worked uh, through a program called STEM Start at a local community middle school where we did some scientific experiments with kids. And I realized, oh, I love being a teacher. And so then I applied for some leadership roles at my medical school where I was able to do some um, peer leading. Uh, I served as the president of our derm interest group and also um, currently of our student dermatology journal club. Um, And in that role, I've started some kind of new initiatives in these um, kind of lectures or small gatherings over Zoom during COVID, um, Mm -hmm. teaching kind of the first and second year medical students about uh, how to describe lesions in terms of these morphology words that dermatologists use and starting to just feel more comfortable with working up more common um, dermatologic diseases in just a student peer setting, because I know that can be so intimidating sometimes uh, first getting into dermatology. So um, it's been really rewarding to work with other students who are interested in dermatology. And now I know that PEDRA has the mentorship program too, which is so amazing. And um, it's inspired me to one day want to be a mentor when I'm an attending as well. You know, this is a great opportunity to segue into your role as the PEDRA fellow, because I know that you do support the early investigator committee um, as the medical student liaison, and you're sort of that voice for the medical students in our community and how to keep them engaged. Could you talk a little bit more about that and about your role overall and how you're supporting PEDRA? Sure. Um, Yeah, so when I came on as the PEDRA fellow, one of my goals was to really increase the medical student involvement because I know just from talking to my peers how interested in pediatric dermatology everyone is and everyone wants to get more involved. Mm -hmm. Um, So for the past PEDRA conference, I was able to gather a group of interested individuals um, who wanted to get more involved specifically with helping with the conference. And we had an amazing group of student volunteers who helped us with taking notes at some of our breakout sessions and really I'm helping with the flow of some of our poster pub crawl sessions. And I know a lot of these students wanted even more involvement with PEDRA in terms of getting membership and attending a lot of our educational 
sessions. Um, we had amazing feedback from the past dedicated research forum at the PEDRA conference, uh, the next gen forum for mm -hmm. medical students. And I know that's something that I've been chatting with our EI chair, Dr. Howerluck, about um, ways that we can continue that as PEDRA conferences go forward, both virtually and hopefully in person, um, and just ways to have kind of these, these safe outlets for medical students to learn about pediatric dermatology. Absolutely. I mean, it's so great that you are on the EI committee and supporting medical students in that way. And then I, you're, you know, in addition to that, you're supporting the organization as a whole through all these other outlets. So can you talk about your social media support, your board support and your other activities? Sure. Yeah. One of the funnest roles of um, being the Pedro Fellow is the social media. So it's <laughs> kind of creative outlet where we're really connecting with our community and sharing what's going on in the organization. Um, most recently, we're kind of going back and sharing all of the previous research fellows who are medical students and worked on projects with amazing Pedro mentors and uh, kind of sharing those experiences because during our campaign, we're trying to fund an additional research fellow, which I think is really amazing and just a, a, an amazing program uh, for medical students. And then the other thing that I love doing is helping with the consensus guideline projects. So I recently started to get involved with the CMAVM project um, and helping with some literature review for that and looking forward to some more involvement as the project proceeds. So that's been really rewarding to kind of use my research experience from my research year to really connect it back to PEDRA. And then the last aspect of the Pedro Fellow role that I think has been really exciting and also surprising that I didn't know I would learn so much about was the business side of research organizations by attending all of these board meetings and executive committee meetings and being there to provide administrative support and take notes at these meetings has actually been a huge learning experience for me of how important certain elements are in the success of a research organization. And it's also just shown me how amazing the our board members and our staff are. Um, I think that Pedro is very unique in terms of the culture and I'm very honored to be a part of it. I feel the same way. And it is really remarkable, you know, to, to be in a position where you can straddle both the mission and the business side of the organization, because I, I agree. I think Pedro is super fortunate in that both sides work harmoniously and everybody is all in it for exactly the same reason. And it's really great to see that from staff in the trenches to the board guiding at a higher level. It's just really exciting to see that work happening. I totally agree. It's so inspiring and it just makes me love pediatric dermatology even more. <laughs> same, same. Everybody has like just got such a heart for it. I know. I know. It's a very special group of people. And I think that Pedro just reflects pediatric dermatology so perfectly. Oh, I think so too. So we've covered a lot of your medical background and your medical goals, and we've talked about your role with Pedra. Let's just talk about you now. Um, is there something about yourself that you'd like to share with everyone? Sure. Um, so something that people are oftentimes surprised to learn about me is my adventurous side. Um, so I love to travel. And during one of my trips abroad, I was very adventurous and I did uh, skydiving, bungee jumping and scuba diving. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so much fun. And of course, during medical school, I haven't been as crazy and had all of these adventurous opportunities, but um, it's always a fun fact that I love to share about myself because I am very adventurous um, and people are often surprised to, to learn that. Yes, that is surprising. I can't imagine jumping out of a plane, diving off a bridge, and then diving into water with an air tank strapped to you. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it's sort of, to me, equally terrifying as bungee jumping and jumping out of a plane, but how do the two compare? Yeah, I think that um, bungee jumping, there was, it was moral control, I think, because you physically jump yourself. So mm -hmm. I kind of had time in my head to like 
process what I was doing and kind of <laughs> chat with the uh, individual who was helping. And um, so I felt like more in control in that situation. I think with skydiving, the biggest difference was that you're really not in control because once you're up in the air, it's very fast paced when everyone starts jumping out and you're strapped onto your instructor and they're just going. And so there's no like, wait, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> So for me, like that was the biggest difference when I was like, oh my gosh, there's no going back. It was like almost doomed. But of course, once like you jump, it, it's so exciting and exhilarating. And the view was just beautiful. This was in Australia. So it was right wow. over the beach and it was just really stunning. But I will say the pictures are hilarious because I'm gripping so tightly onto the instructor's hands. So I probably was a little bit terrified. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. And I can't decide which is worse being able to process what you're about to do or just leaping and having it happen. <laughs> you know, I know they were both super fun experiences. And I feel like sometimes like uh, the friends that I did these activities with were like, would we do that again? And I was like, you know what? At the time I was like, yeah, like I, you, your adrenaline's going, you're like, right. I'm definitely do it again. But now I'm like, you know, it's off my bucket list. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm ready for the next thing. So yeah. you've had these experiences above the earth and then you've gone below in the water. What was diving like? It was so much fun. I will say I was definitely scared of just, you know, what if I couldn't breathe or what if something happened with the tank? And, um, but once I was down there, everyone has hand signals to communicate. If you feel oh, wow. like you can pop back up. And, um, once I kind of started seeing the clownfish, like a little Nemo, I was very happy and it just was very beautiful. This was at the great barrier reef. So it was a wow. very special experience. I, that's so amazing. What wonderful experiences that you'll get to have those memories for the rest of your life. What do you think is next for you on your thrill list? <laughs> Ooh, good question. Um, right now, kind of the big things on my bucket list and something that I've been missing during the pandemic is just travel. Yes. Um, I've always loved traveling. I originally was actually born in England. I came here when I was very young um, at two years old, but for holidays, we would always go back to see my grandparents in England. So I have this early joy of traveling and I love flying on planes. And so I really hope that when it's safe again, I can kind of explore Europe because I've only been to, um, to England and to Spain where another family member lives. And I've heard very amazing things about both Italy and Greece are top of my bucket list. And I just, I would love to go there, especially Italy and eat all the good food and the pasta and the pizza. I just have heard friends say it's very amazing there. There's nothing quite like it. It is incredible. The food in Italy. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm really jealous that you've experienced it. <laughs> Uh, yes. I mean, even handmade it, fresh pasta in Italy is just a completely different taste than it is when it's freshly made here. I can't even begin to describe it. It's oh so God. cool. You're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, then I think I'll let you go so you can grab some food. Thank you so much for being a part of getting to know you today, Holly. It was so fantastic hearing about how you support the organization and hearing just about you and this exciting life you lead. <laughs> I promise it's not that exciting now behind the scenes. Um, but thank you so much for having me, Jen. It's been so great talking to you. Thanks, Holly.